Ravnica, the city of guilds, a plain wine metropolis that encompasses countless peoples, ideologies, and cultures. It's regularly ranked as the most popular plane among Magic the Gathering players, and it's pretty easy to see why. While some worlds in MTG may restrict themselves into niches, Ravnica is truly the melting pot of the magic multiverse. Anything you see in yourself, you can find it somewhere on Ravnica, and in recent years, this plane's become quite literally the center of the game's story. I've covered Ravnica in several different videos, discussing topics both large and small, but we haven't truly checked in on this plane since the War of the Spark. I think it's time for a revisit to Ravnica, to check on the various guilds of the plane and how they're doing following the numerous cataclysms that's happened there. From the breaking of the guild pact, to the invasion of Nicol Bolas, and most recently the attack by New Phyrexia, how have the guilds evolved and changed through all of this turmoil? Are all 10 guilds still standing after facing so much? In today's video, let's revisit the guilds of Ravnica, learn a bit about their purpose, their history, and their current status in the game post Phyrexian Invasion. But first, I just want to give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Wizards of the Coast, the people who bring you Magic the Gathering and help me to bring you its story. As an MTG ambassador, I'm happy to work alongside Wizards to bring you the lore of magic, and today's topic of revisiting Ravnica is perfect as we're set to launch on our own revisit in the game with Ravnica Remastered. You too can revisit this nostalgic world and all of its flavor spanning 13 years in Magic's history. Iconic characters, amazing reprints, and a unique draft experience await you as we look back into Ravnica's past with Ravnica Remastered hitting stores January 12th, 2024. Check my link in the description below to pre-order your own little piece of Ravnican history today. And again, thanks Wizards for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the lore. In the strictest sense of the word, the Boros Legion stands as the righteous enforcers of justice on the plane of Ravnica. While the law itself is not for them to decide, whatever laws that are created by the Azorius Magistrate, the Boros will ensure are followed by the citizenry. They're built as the pillars of justice, those who stand against chaos and instability. They chiefly believe that, through laws and their enforcement, Ravnica will be a harmonious place where all Ravnicans can coexist in peace. Though to achieve this goal, the Boros won't shy away from spilling blood of those who break the law. The Boros Legion is extremely militaristic in its ideology, aesthetic, and hierarchy. As such, they often act as not only the police force of Ravnica, but its only true standing army. Leadership of the Boros Legion has changed hands a few times in its long history, with powerful archangels always assuming control of the guild, as angels to the Boros are figures of not only worship, but living manifestations of justice. The guild's paron or founder was the angel Razia, who was killed during the events of the original Ravnica block by corrupted agents of the Demir and Azorius. After her fall, the angel Feather took control of the Boros, using their diminished forces to act more like paid security for other more wealthy guilds. This lowly state of the Boros enraged the more zealous of the Legion, who championed the rise of the war leader Aurelia. Aurelia wrestled control over the Boros Legion from Feather, and restored the guild to their former glory. Aurelia has led her Firemane Angels into countless conflicts on Ravnica, even valiantly defending the other guilds from the likes of Nicol Bolas and the invading Phyrexians. Now, the Boros have established garrisons all over Ravnica, with almost all of the races of the plane looking to join their honorable ranks in pursuit of justice. During the War of the Spark, the Angels of the Boros Legion took flight against the Dread Horde of Nicol Bolas, and even the Fallen Feather was redeemed and regained her command over the Fireman Angels. Chief in their response to this otherworldly threat was their unique floating garrison known as the Parhelion II. The original Parhelion was destroyed by the insidious plans of House Demir back during the breaking of the original Guild Pact. It was constructed to investigate the bounds of Ravnican reality. It would fly high up into the stars and even beyond. But what they found was only a vast nothingness, the blind eternity. They couldn't unlock the secrets of Ravnica's limits or the mysterious planeswalking visitors that had appeared. 
So, the Parhelion II was more constructed to be a mobile garrison that housed the Boros's angel forces. The Boros Legion would again see devastating losses when Elish Norn turned her invasion of the multiverse towards Ravnica. The branches of the encroaching invasion tree pierced the sky of Ravnica and tore through the Parhelion II, killing countless of Boros fighters who were housed inside. This became a rallying cry for the Boros Angels, who managed to swell their numbers and mount an effective counterattack against the Phyrexians, being instrumental in the survival of the plane. The Orzhov Syndicate is a religious institution built upon the idea that wealth equals power and power equals stability. They're a church of deals, in the business of making a profit, and in some way or another is involved with every known exchange of coin on Ravnica. While the guild may have, at some point in its past, been in service to some holy religious testament, what it is today is nothing more than the facade of piety, a corrupt institution that in its own unique way helps support the delicate balance of Ravnica. All the familiar structures of a true religion are there, intricate rituals, places of worship, priests, and dedicated followers, but make no mistake, the Orzov Syndicate is first and foremost a money lending service home to some of the richest individuals on Ravnica, those who actually profit from the guilt of others. They lure in would-be borrowers with the promise of wealth, power, and longevity, but this guild is much more likely to strip you of everything you have, including your life and even your afterlife. For if you're indebted to the Orzov Syndicate, even death cannot relieve you of that burden. Your spirit will be bound to the guild's service until you've settled your loan, with interest. It's hard to say who was the direct founder of the Orzov, as many of its high-ranking members experience long lives thanks to their contractual magic, and can even continue operations well into undeath as ghosts. But it's agreed that the modern practices of the Syndicate began with the Obsidat Council, who continue to rule the guild even after their mortal deaths. Chief among them was Karlov, the leading ghost of the Obsidat. They maintained control and profit until they were relieved of command by the ghost assassin Kaya. Kaya, being a planeswalker, was tricked by Nicol Bolas in dispatching the Obsidat and assuming leadership of the Orzov, all in furtherance of his plans to invade Ravnica. Being sympathetic to the lingering souls bound to the guild, Kaya as guild leader freed the spirits from their debts, which plunged the Orzov into chaos and infighting. Kaya wasn't a tactful guild leader, and her rule would be challenged by those who saw her as a traitor to their beliefs. Though the oligarchs of the Orzov agreed to fight against Bolas on Kaya's request, her standing continued to weaken, until she ventured out to fight against the growing threat of New Phyrexia, and her authority as guild leader passed to the heir of the Karlov fortune, Tessa Karlov, who suddenly planned to gain this power through a number of well-executed betrayals and shady deals. When New Phyrexia came to Ravnica, it was the insane wealth stored up by the Orzov under Tessa's rule that saw the plane spared from total completion. As such, the balance of power has shifted, with many, if not all, owing the Orzov Syndicate a great debt. The Simic Combine are a strange, distant, and little understood guild by many of the Ravnican citizens. They're seen as aloof and almost mad in their dealings, though this is without knowledge of their true purpose and contributions to the city. The Simic were founded on the idea that life is always changing, just as their city always seemed to be expanding across the entirety of the plain. It was determined that, with the spread of the urban landscape, nature would have little chance to survive, and without natural elements that can survive this rapid change, Ravnica itself would eventually die. Thus, the Simic devoted themselves to the magic and science of life. The Simic are the chief doctors and biological researchers of Ravnica. You'll find no better healer than one of the Combine. They have extracted every secret from the natural world and used them to serve the people of Ravnica. But some members of the Simic saw their duty as something more, and were driven to mad experiments in order to, quote-unquote, save the city. They began forcing evolutionary adaptations out of animals and even in humanoids, making hybrids and mutants, which went on to facilitate the public's distrust of the guild. The Simic have been ruled over by three different ideologies, 
The maddened Momir Vig wanted to force mutations over the whole of Ravnica in a frenzied attempt to cure all illnesses and making the citizens and the city stronger. After Momir Vig was killed, a deep subterranean ocean under the city revealed itself, along with a population of merfolk who quickly joined the guild. Zagana became the next guild leader as head of the Utopians, an order that sought to gently nudge life with magic that adapts it to the expanding pressures of the city in the hopes of reaching a Utopian status more naturally. But as tensions between the guilds and external threats struck Ravnica, the Utopian ideology was challenged as too slow and impractical, so leadership of the Simic passed to Vanifar, leader of the Adaptationists who conducted extreme experiments on themselves, forcibly evolving their bodies and crafting powerful warriors to help defend the guild and Ravnica. These are known as Guardians and the Guardian Project. Though they fought against Nicol Bolas in the War of the Spark, the arrival of New Phyrexia offered the Simic a new chance to further evolve themselves. The glistening oil that rained down above them was a source of captivation for the Simic, who studied its effects and with some members willingly surrendering themselves over to completion, seeing it as the next stage of evolution. As a result, much of Ravnica don't trust the Simic Combine. The Azorius Senate stands as Ravnica's centralized governing body, responsible for deliberating on and creating laws that can be enforced through the use of magic spells. The Azorius see themselves as the only guild which is standing between a functioning Ravnica and a city wrecked by havoc and unrest. Though they follow a just purpose, that's not to say the Azorius are perfect. As protocol and rules hold almost religious importance to this guild, doing anything new to help the citizens can take substantial time. As the Senate pours over legal documents, debates precedents, and wade through bureaucratic red tape, Ravnikans can suffer while waiting on their tedious, slow-form action. With all their flaws, it's important to remember that without the Azorius, we wouldn't have Ravnica and its guilds as we know them. The modern interpretation of the Ravnican guilds, as well as their duties, was first written by the founder of the Azorius Senate, Azor I, with the magically bound document called the Guild Pact. It's his standard that the Azorius try to follow. While Azor could have made his guild the foremost powerful on Ravnica, the ancient Sphinx understood true justice and believed by working together could the guild ensure Ravnica's survival into the boundless future. The Azoria Senate was led by Grand Arbiter Augustin IV, who presided and ruled on the highest challenges in the Ravnican court. He believed that Ravnica would fall into chaos if it were not firmly adhering to his idea of order. Augustine began introducing measures of reform which further restricted his fellow guilds and citizens of Ravnica, but true change didn't come until the original guild pact was broken and hostile actions could once again be taken between them. Augustine personally killed the guild master of the Demir and then used his army of ghosts to attack the Boros Legion, plunging Ravnica into chaos and furthering his demands for stricter laws. Eventually, his treachery would be uncovered and the Grand Arbiter would be killed, then succeeded by the Sphinx, Esperia. In a Ravnica no longer bound by the magic of the Guild Pact, Esperia found that the Azorius could not be effective in quelling acts of violence between the guilds. That's despite the veneer that their laws had any power at all. Without Jace, the living Guild Pact, there to maintain order between the guilds all the time, the Azorius began to rely more heavily on more militaristic wing of the Senate to force compliance. That was until Esperia was killed by Vraska, the Golgari guild leader, and the plans of Nicol Bolas came to fruition. The Sphinx was replaced by Dovin Ban, a lackey of Bolas, who found loophole after loophole in their decrees and rules to hurry himself up the ladder of leadership, which he then systematically weakened the guild to give Bolas the best chance of invasion. There were those within the Azorius who saw the increasingly policed state of Ravnica as a detriment to the orderly society that was their purpose, such as the stern Lavinia, who acted as the deputy of the Living Guild Pact. She rebelled against Dovin and Bolas, and after the War of the Spark, became the Grand Arbiter Pro Tem, an acting guild leader of the Azorius. Though she doesn't covet the office, she works to reform the Senate rules to ensure that no bad actors can again infiltrate and use the guild to their own ends. 
the Is It League of Ravnica probably has the most practical purpose of all the guilds, one that actually stands to improve the everyday lives of the plain citizens. They act as a corps of civil engineers, responsible for the city's growing infrastructure such as roadways, sewage and water systems, and construction of new buildings. They're also the chief scientific institution on Ravnica, acting at the forefront of technological advancements in support of bettering the living conditions within the city. At least this was their duty at the signing of the original Guild Pact. The Izzet invites the most intelligent Ravnicans to join their ranks, but with great genius often comes with it great passion, and sometimes those passions can result in overly ambitious and often dangerous experiments. Izzet scientists pride themselves on their pursuit of knowledge in both science and spellcraft, with some disregarding safety in the process. A number of cataclysmic reactions can be traced back to eager Izzet researchers messing with magic or elements they didn't truly understand. It's a common phrase among the Izzet that you cannot make an omelette without first breaking a few eggs. Only the eggs they end up breaking can oftentimes be entire district blocks of people's homes. The Izzet League have been led for most of their existence by their founder, the Dragon Niv Mizzet. An original signer of the Guild Pact, Niv Mizzet is without a doubt the most intellectual being on Ravnica. The last of the true dragons of the plane, he admits himself that he could seize power of all the guilds and rule it if he so chose. However, the task would become tedious and a bore for him over time. He issues commands to Izzet members through a type of telepathy called the Fire Mind, where the dragon steers research and collective collaborations to push the bounds of what's possible, as well as spellcraft that changes the fabric of reality on Ravnica. Though he's utterly vain and narcissistic, there's no doubt that he's personally responsible for countless blessings now enjoyed by the Ravnican citizenry. Though Niv Mizzet has earned the respect of his guild, that's not to say he's currently the Izzet's unquestioned leader. As the dragon knows about other planes and planeswalkers, he prepared Ravnica to defend itself against otherworldly threats, which often pulled him away from the day-to-day -day Izzet activities. So in his place, the charismatic guild mage and planeswalker, Ralzaric, often took on the duties of guild leader. This was made permanent when Nicol Bolas invaded Ravnica in the War of the Spark. Niv Mizzet had planned for this, as he always had a plan for everything, but he failed in executing the contingency of becoming the Living Guild Pact with all of its intended powers in time before Bolas' arrival. Niv Mizzet fought Nicol Bolas anyway, but tragically lost to the powerful Elder Planeswalker, being utterly evaporated. But even death was planned for by Niv Mizzet. As Ral Zarek became the Izzet Guild leader, he followed the final instructions of the Fire Mind and orchestrated Niv Mizzet's resurrection and ascension as Living Guild Pact. This was a pivotal moment in the War of the Spark, as a superpowered Living Guild Pact Niv Mizzet was able to aid in the ultimate defeat of Bolas. Now, as the Living Guild Pact, Niv Mizzet must resign as Guild Leader of the Izzet League to preside over the stabilization of all Ravnican guilds, leaving Ral Zarek as its current Guildmaster. When Elish Norn unleashed her forces on Ravnica, Ral Zarek was instrumental in ending the assault led by a completed Vraska with an invention that vibrated the glistening oil, disrupting its ability to communicate with the Phyrexian hive mind. But not all of the Izzet League were looked at as heroes. Many of its more maddened thinkers used the glistening oil in experimental research, leading to several being corrupted and, like the Simic, losing the public's trust in the process. The Gruul clans are the strangest guild on Ravnica, because they're the least guild-like in their structure and responsibilities. They're often referred to as the guild which isn't one, and they were established at the same time as the other guilds at the signing of the original guild pact, charged with stewardship over the wild and yet unbuilt parts of the plain. Though the city of Ravnica is vast, there are still places of natural growth, but it dwindles with each passing year. It was their duty to keep civilization in check, to ensure a balance so that Ravnica wouldn't lose all of its natural resources in its efforts to expand. However, over the years, the other guilds all look to increase their influence and territories in a shadow arms race for power, and that meant spreading out to this wild, unclaimed area. Soon, guilds like the Simic and Selesnians started to claim responsibility over aspects the Gruul had once originally been charged, shrinking the very purpose of the guild. 
With others now ensuring nature can live within the city's urban landscape, the Gruul were systematically excluded from interguild treaties and laws. They had been essentially pushed out. This resulted in many of the scattered Gruul clans revolting against anything that they saw as encroaching civilization, taking a more aggressive approach to their original duty. The Gruul clans don't share the same hierarchy structure as the other guilds, with various clans all led by different chiefs with different goals. However, usually the biggest, strongest, and angriest individual of the clans is respected enough by all and listened to, effectively making them the guild leader of the Gruul. For most of the clan's history, the angriest and most brutish has always been a cyclops named Borborigomos. He directs raids, consolidates forces, and rallies against Ravnican civilization the hardest of all the Gruul, making him the guild leader. He was eventually opposed, however, by a young upstart named Domri Raid, a small human boy who had just gone through his rite of passage to join the clans. Though physically much weaker, Domri was a planeswalker and had access to magic that Borbori Gomos just couldn't withstand. Domri was naive in his youth and fell into the trappings of the dragon Nicobolus, listening to his whispers of power and promise to raise Ravnican civilization to the ground, bringing about a more natural world. Domri took the dragon's powers and used them to defeat Borborigomos. Though the Cyclops still lived, he was seen as weak by the clans as leadership was passed to Domri Raid. During the War of the Spark, Domri believed he was bringing about the End Rays, the profited fall of civilization. He even managed to summon a wild god of the clans, Ilharg, one of several animal deities worshipped by the Gruul. As Domri led the Gruul in an all-out assault on Ravnica, the young planeswalker quickly realized he was merely a pawn for the evil Nicobolus, who eventually had him killed as well. As the whole of Ravnica pushed back against Bolas, even the Gruul saw that they were again being used as a tool by a new oppressor and fought back. In the aftermath, Borborigomos returned to the clans and became its guild leader once again, though little was heard of them since they retreated out of the city following the War of the Spark. House Demir, like the Gruul clans, is a guild that isn't really a guild, at least as far as the public's concerned. This is because House Demir is by far the most secretive and elusive of the guilds, choosing to instead work from the shadows on activities not suited for general public knowledge. There are a cabal of dark assassins, spies, informants, thieves, and other low-handed criminals. While this sounds a bit out of the realm of guildly duties, there was a reasoning behind the formation of House Demir. Back at the signing of the original Guild Pact, its founder, the vampire Zadek, demanded that there be a clause in the document that effectively hid the Demir from public knowledge. Each of the signers agreed to never reveal their existence, ensuring the guild's anonymity and requiring them to remain hidden. This was because the Demir's original purpose was that of a covert intelligence gathering operation. They were to stick to the shadows, out of sight of even their fellow guilds, and collect information on any would-be attempts of rivals staging coups, or in other ways disrupting the balance of power that was keeping Ravnica stable. They would be the eyes and ears of peace throughout the city, but quickly, staying in the darkness corrupted that purpose. As their more objectively insidious actions, such as assassinations, extortion, and bribery were now being blamed on more recognized guilds, such as the Rakdos, the Demir felt emboldened to expand their own power without fear of being ousted. For 10,000 years, Zadek, a terribly clever and cunning planner, grew his shadowy empire and slowly exploited his influence over the other guilds, even being so bold as to hire out blatant attacks on them, all while Ravnica only believed there to be nine guilds. The magic of the Guild Pact, which kept Ravnica from chaos, was eventually broken thanks to the claws of anonymity Zadek had in place. When those of the Boros Legion, not knowing who he was, had the vampire arrested, thus exposing the Demir to the public for the first time and breaking the Guild Pact. Since its fall, House Demir has remained active in Ravnican society, but in a new capacity. Now led by the shape-shifting and cunning Lazav, 
The Demir aren't recognized as a quote unquote official guild, but still act as members of a public organization which served as couriers, investigators, and reporters. They were to collect the seedy secrets of Ravnica and make them public. Even still, Lazav understood that the true power of House Demir came from their less respectable services, as hired assassins, spies, and thieves. Lazav too covets personal power and looks to again embolden House Demir. Despite this, Lazav was one of the first on Ravnica to track and report on suspicious otherworldly dealings with a force even stronger than the Demir, and a mind more strategic than his own. This was Nicol Bolas. Though the Demir were successful in rooting out traitors working for the dragon, its guild leader recognized that Nicol Bolas was a threat to the Demir, and didn't hesitate in supporting the other guilds in efforts to defend Ravnica against his invasion. Showing a bit of heroism, Lazav joined with the likes of Shanda Nalar, Sahili Ray, and the Azorius arrester Lavinia in disrupting the operations of Bolas's lackey, Dovin Bon. Lazav shapeshifted into Chandra, distracting Dovin, and even eventually blinding the planeswalker, forcing the enemy to retreat. Though their status as a guild has been in question recently, Lazav still lent his power to resurrecting Niv Mizzet as the new Living Guild Pact, but shortly after the War of the Spark, disappeared. Most public Demir activities have ceased, with many believing the guild has disbanded. Even with the Phyraxian invasion of Ravnica, the Demir have either remained hidden or are truly gone. Though there are still some among the guilds who never count Lazav and House Demir out, and see this only as a continued ruse to once again establish their secretive nature. The Selesnian Conclave is another guild steeped in mysteries and secrets, though with a much more public image. This guild focuses on championing the natural world, or what's left of it, within the choking urban development of Ravnica. They believe that without a guardian defending nature, the city would eventually overwhelm what is green on the plain and all will end as a result. The Selesnians stand between Ravnica and its own destruction, describing themselves as a selfless, nurturing spiritual group, looking to build a lasting harmony, although others are quick to accuse the Conclave as nothing more than a brainwashing nature cult. Despite their good-natured persona, the Selesnian Conclave does have a darker side to it. They champion peace, harmony, and unity on Ravnica, but at the same time, employ muscle to bully civilians of Ravnica into complying with their edicts. As righteous as their cause may be, there's no line they're unwilling to cross in order to achieve their goals, which makes them extremely dangerous. Though that danger feels distant as you peer into the social areas built by the Selesnians, their beautiful white marble halls, laced by expansive green gardens and natural life, exploding into sun-drenched halls open to the air, which seems to almost invite anyone, all disguising what some say are extremist ideologies. The Selesnian Conclave was founded by its Perun, a being known as Matt Selesnia, an elemental which resulted from the combination of several dryads singing in harmony with the world soul of Ravnica itself. From this union, Matt Selesnia stood as the speaker of Ravnica's natural spirit, and proposed efforts to help ensure the lasting balance of its guilds for the prosperity of all. Because of this unwavering adherence to the world soul, others who sought to disrupt the balance knew that Matt Selesnia couldn't be bargained with, bribed, or extorted into cooperation. So evil figures like Zadek of House Demir tried to manipulate others into killing the guild leader of the Selesnian Conclave. With this attempt, Matt Selesnia retreated into the world tree of Ravnica, the guild hall, Vitugazi. There, the elemental remained dormant, acting solely as the voice of the world soul and nothing more. To interpret Matt Selesnia's orders, a new guild leader was crowned, another union of three dryads called Trostani, whose heads were called Order, Harmony, and Life, the three aspirations of the guild. Trostani operated as she could to receive the words of Matt Selesnia, process them through how to best achieve the goals of Selesnia, and relay those orders to the rest of the guild. But sometimes, life, order, and harmony weren't all simultaneously achievable. When this happens, Trostani herself retreats into isolation to debate amongst her heads about what's the best move to make. Then, a new acting guild leader is appointed. This recently has been the elven priest, Imara Tandris. As Bolas made himself known on Ravnica and began his invasion, the Selesnians were asked to assist the other guilds in defense of the plane. 
though they had no trust in many of the other guilds, namely the Izzets, whose experiments routinely disrupted the natural balance of Ravnica, Trostani and Amara both eventually agreed to act to ensure unity, harmony, and peace against Nicol Bolas. Though the War of the Spark would have a devastating effect on the guild, as they would lose their world tree, Vitugazi, in the attack. It was animated by the planeswalker Nyssa Ravain to help fend off the invading dreadhordes of Bolas, but was eventually defeated by the undead God Eternals. Now the world tree lies dormant and shattered, with the connecting voice of Matt Selesnia and Ravnica's world soul seemingly severed. The Cult of Rakdos stands as one of the most perplexing guilds on Ravnica, a group of hedonistic, sadistic, and masochistic circus performers who rejoice in disgusting acts of blood magic and festivals championing the ultimate pursuit of pleasure, all at the behest of their central figure, the ancient demon Rakdos, who acts as their guild leader. So what then was the original purpose of the Cult of Rakdos in Ravnican society? At the signing of the Guild Pact, the Cult of Rakdos was essentially a means to quell the demon's more… aggressive tendencies, offering him and his followers a seat at the table so that they could be controlled and forced, magically, to adhere to the peaceful balance of power between the other guilds. Though the other founders couldn't force the Cult of Rakdos into a specific role on Ravnica, they still do provide a civil service to the plane, at least on paper. The Cult of Rakdos was to be the menial laborers of the city, working in all manner of less desirable industries. They also became the premier entertainers of Ravnica. Performers, festivals, catering, anything fun would essentially be hired out to the Cult of Rakdos. This guild had become quite skilled in these services because it is truly their function when dealing with their figure of worship, the demon Rakdos. Rakdos can slumber for months or even years at a time, and when he awakes, the demon demands new forms of entertainment to occupy his time. Over the years, the more zealous of the cult have plunged into deep depravity, all in an attempt to gain Rakdos' favor and provide the long-lived demon new forms of pleasure he's never before seen, which is growing increasingly difficult. Because this guild attracts those of free spirits pursuing fun, they collectively fear any singular authority gaining power over the whole of Ravnica. This is why the Cult of Rakdos regularly causes havoc on the operations of the other guilds, to ensure that none of them obtain too much power and enforce their ideologies over them. They do this through raucous festivals, riots, and pure insubordination. During the years of the first guild pact being broken, the cult of Rakdos was being led by the blood witch Lysolda while Rakdos slept. As acting guild leader, she performed a ritual to summon Rakdos to help fight back the forces unleashed by the other guilds looking to obtain ultimate authority. The demon fought a gigantic biological slime experiment concocted by the Simic called Project Kraj, ending its destructive reign but at the same time causing substantial injuries to the demon and knocking Rakdos into a coma. After the demon's fall, Lysolda's leadership seemed weak and even her followers turned on her, eating her alive in a fervent display of callousness. This is when the Cult of Rakdos began to shift from a zealous group of demon worshippers to that of a more participating guild of Ravnica who provide entertainment to the masses. They began to more regularly destabilize the authority of the other guilds in order to keep their freedom from oppressors, and this became doubly true when the tyrant Nicol Bolas made his way to Ravnica. A new emissary of Rakdos, Hikara, met with the other guilds to discuss peace treaties and partnerships to help defend the plane but she lost her life thanks to the manipulations of Bolas. Because of this, Rakdos was reluctant to aid the other guilds. Tomic of the Orzov Syndicate brought Hikara's body back to the demon as a gesture of peace and unity, after which she was resurrected as a blood witch. There was a divide in the cult between helping the others as Hikara wanted and letting chaos reign as another powerful blood witch, Exava wanted. Hikara's position won out, and the Cult of Rakdos aided in the defense of Ravnica. This culminated in the demon himself, Rakdos, allowing the planeswalker Gideon Jura to ride atop him into battle against Nicol Bolas. Though it's a sore point for Rakdos, who'd rather never hear it mentioned again. Following the War of the Spark, a new figure of the cult has started to rise in prominence, the Grand Dame Judith, known as the Scourge Diva. She's the premier performer of the Rakdos, a true star, and covets the adoration her demon master receives. 
She entertains the masses with her skills, but Rakdos truly gets all the credit. She hopes to one day change that. She's taking the cult of Rakdos to new levels of civil service, as Judith was important in the defense of the city against the Phyrexian invaders. She truly cares for the people of Ravnica, mourning their deaths as deeply as she cherishes their applause. The Golgari Swarm is a seldom seen, seldom talked about guild that's probably one of the most important in terms of Ravnica's overall survival. They were originally established as the foremost agriculturalists on the plain, responsible for farming and harvesting a sustainable, cheap food for the citizenry. Such a noble pursuit is seldom discussed in public life because of the means in which this miracle is achieved. Because the ever-growing city makes large farms nearly impossible, the Golgari have taken residence under the streets of the surface to the deep tunnels and sewers that make up the Undercity. No traditional farm could exist in these conditions, removed from natural rain and sunlight, so the Golgari operate what are known as rot farms. These unpleasant mills of rotting matter, from bodies to decaying wood, are the key ingredient in the Golgari's life-preserving gruel, which has provided the Ravnican masses with a cheap means of sustenance. Just never ask what it's made of. As a guild, the Golgari believe in the unending constant cycle of life and death, believing that all things come to an end, and that end is merely the beginning of something better. That's why many of this subterranean group dabble in necromancy, resurrect corpses as zombies, and become everlasting liches. The founder of the Golgari, the dark elf Zvogthir, signed the original guild pact and understood the purpose of his people well. Still, his desire to retain personal power lasted even past his mortal death, as he managed to resurrect his own body and become a lich. Over the course of their history, the unending rule of Svogthir was challenged several times because of the diverse groups, all with different interests, that make up the Golgari Swarm. Each vied for more power, and each attempted to usurp control of the guild. The two major factions fighting for power were the Divkarin, or Dark Elves, and the Teratogans, which was made up of various disparaged monsters such as plant zombies and gorgons. Eventually, a combined effort of Gorgons, known as the Sisters of Stone Death, managed to defeat Svogthir, destroying his body and imprisoning his head, supplanting themselves as the new guild leaders of the Golgari, launching what would be a constant changing of leadership for the guild over the following years. The Sisters of Stone Death were then overthrown by the High Priest of the Dark Elves, Savra, who worked alongside the Demir to destabilize the other guilds. But she too was eventually betrayed by the Demir guild leader, Zadek, who killed her as part of his own personal pursuit of power. Vengeance would be sought by Savra's brother, Gerard, who helped to defeat the vampire and then named himself the new guild leader of the Golgari. But shortly after he gained control of the swarm, he was sacrificed in a ritual to summon Rakdos. But those of the Golgari don't truly die, and Gerard simply returned to lead the Golgari as a zombie. For years, Gerard ruled the swarm, quelling any uprisings quickly and brutally. But soon, dissension between the guilds started to inspire more of the Undercity to speak out against Gerard, who they believed was not working in the Golgari's best interest to take advantage of the chaos happening on the surface. This is when a planeswalker of the Golgari, the Gorgon Vraska, returned home at the behest of her master, Nicol Bolas. Vraska had worked for the Elder Dragon to pursue her own desires of power, power that Bolas extended to her as leadership over her people. She returned to Ravnica, routed out Gerard, and killed him, and then assumed the mantle of guild leader. Those of the Swarm welcomed her leadership, as they believed Gerard alienated most of the guild, preferring those of great influence while Vraska was seen as a defender of the entire swarm. While she was an agent of Bolas, Vraska first and foremost cared for her people more than anything else. She attacked the Golgari's enemies, even if that meant Bolas, who threatened all of Ravnica. She worked alongside the other planeswalkers who didn't trust her to help shelter most of the Ravnican citizens in the other city, away from the bulk of the fighting that was the War of the Spark. Though victorious against Bolas, Vraska was still seen as an accomplice, and was sent out on a mission to atone for her actions, and was sent away from Ravnica. In her absence, the factions of the Golgari again whispered about leadership change, with Izoni even speaking words of a rebellion brewing within the swarm. None of those plans would come to fruition, however, as Vraska, still acting as the Golgari guild leader, was captured and completed by Elish Norn on New Phyrexia. 
she was instructed by her new master to return to her home and lead the invasion of Ravnica. She did this first by bringing glistening oil to her former people of the Gagari, virtually Phyrexianizing the entire guild. From the tunnels of the Undercity, scores of completed Golgari attacked the surface and the other guilds. This would see the utter collapse of the Golgari Swarm, and their relegation as a quote-unquote dead guild to those who managed to survive the Phyrexian invasion. With Raska's status unknown, and most of their population lost, the Golgari Swarm may no longer exist on Ravnica. Though Ravnica has proven to be a rather resilient plane, that's not to say it's been completely immune to catastrophe. Since its inception and the first Guild Pact was established, Ravnica has always known to be a delicate ecosystem, one that relied on balance between the guilds to keep itself together. Though they've been tested and managed to survive time and time again, that sentiment was eventually proven right. Whenever one guild grows too powerful and the others aren't there to reel them in, destruction always follows. And just like any sensitive ecosystem, when you introduce an unfamiliar outside force, the whole balance can be disrupted. After so much turmoil, it seems at least two of the guilds were unable to survive, at least in a way that we remember them. Though the Golgari and the Demir are seemingly gone, we know Ravnica thrives on balance, and I don't expect those roles, those guilds, to remain dormant for much longer. But now I have a question for you. With Ravnica Remastered coming out soon, what's your favorite guild and why? You let me know in the comments and I'll reply with my own favorite guild, and what I think about yours. For now, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider supporting the content by leaving it a like, sharing it with friends, and becoming a subscriber. It all goes a long way in helping the community grow. And, as always, until next time guys, see ya!